Drag break. Subscribe. Ding the bell. Hey YouTube, welcome to Daddy's RC Addiction. Today we have a really cool RC, and you guys know what it is from the title, but this little dude doesn't. You ready? Yeah. So what's happening? Oh, it is the FMS 124th Power Wagon. Drag brake. Drag brake. Drag brake. Let's get this thing out of the box. Out of the box. <laughs> That's enough of that jargon. If you want more about this car and all the specs and the details, I'll leave a link below where you can check out all that stuff and you can buy it as well. I think I got this from Fair RC. Uh, it was my first order with them. Awesome company so far. Go there and buy one. This box is pretty awesome. It can be a nice carrying case if you don't want to damage your truck. So I would say hold on to that. In the box, they give you a spare tire that you can mount on the back with this mounting kit. Uh, but I think that's going to add a lot of weight in the back that's going to end up making it flip over. So I'm probably not going to put that on. You get a battery, a charger, some O-rings, stickers, and uh, it looks like front portal axle covers. Uh, I guess they call them wearable parts. These are some wearable parts. Um, so that's kind of neat that they include all that. Transmitter, uh, and obviously you get the car, and they had some styrofoam in the front here that was protecting the car from getting squished in the box but this is a pretty nice looking car right Daki? you like this guy yeah i really I, I love the look of the old power wagon i wanted to get the red one too but instead of getting the red one i just bought a red body i think i'm going to try to make this look like beat up and and i don't know just kind of meaner looking but uh, I do like the yellow. Wow. I really do like the colors they chose. This red is really, really nice. It's got a little bit of like metal flaking in there. The yellow one doesn't have any kind of flaking, but it's, it's also a nice deep yellow. Both of these colors are really nice. Can't go wrong. When I got this, I heard so much about the portal axle gear stripping out. So what I ended up doing was I just ordered some more gears uh, straight away when I ordered the car. I ordered the body or the gears. I even ordered uh, another motor. But to my surprise, I think FMS says if your portal axle gears get stripped out, if you email them and show them a picture that they'll send you metal gears for free. So to my surprise, when I ordered from Fair RC, they sent me the metal gears and I didn't even use the car yet. So that is awesome that FMS is just on top of their game and they are making sure that when you get this car you are going to run it for a while and not worry about the gears. Looks like the springs are set up real nice. The articulation right out of the box is nice. Look at that. That's beautiful. It's really got some nice play. The portal axles look really nice two-speed transmission you can see the servo right here that switches the gears that's awesome for when you need a little bit of extra punch or if you're you know walking along a trail you don't want this thing to drive slow so it can keep up with you while you walk another really cool thing FMS has done is they placed the on and off switch where you can reach it without having to take the canopy off that little white button right there is the on and off switch it's just under the left Fender. So on the transmitter you have steering reverse, throttle reverse, you've got your throttle dual rate, your steering dual rate, your throttle trim, and your steering trim. Then you have a bind button but it should come pre-bound ready. And you also have four switches here. The first switch is for your running mode. In the top position you have forward and reverse and in the bottom position you have forward brake reverse. So with a crawler, you just want forward and reverse. The second one is for your battery type. The bottom is for LiPo and the top is for nickel metal hydride. These last two are for your drag brake. Now depending on which position each one of these two is in will give you four different drag brakes. 0, 50, 75, and 100. If they're both in the top position, that's where you get your 100% drag brake. Ew, 
Squippy. And. And what? You could. Spit it out already, boy. Spit it out. Put the toy on it on the back. Cushy and grippy. Yeah. Squippy. Steering servo is strong and quick. Watch what happens when I release. It like follows the movement of the wheel. That is awesome. So you definitely want to dial back your dual rate to where this link right here just barely touches there. So you definitely want to back those off so that they don't touch or you're going to get a lot of jumping and binding. Go ahead, dude. Okay, stop. Let's see, that was... 28 and about a half inch. 28 and a half inches. That is pretty good. Stop at it. Oh. Turning radius to the left was even better. It was about 21, 21 and a half maybe. Now to test how slow this thing can actually crawl. That is simply incredible for an RTR. That's ridiculous. Now let's see what kind of torque it has at that slow speed. Now something a bit more challenging. Look at that. That is awesome. Low and slow. Simply the best 124th RTR ever. So here's something I just figured out. If you turn down the dual rate, you still have tons of torque and it goes even slower than what I just showed. Look at this. This is unbelievable. You could kind of see where I've got the dual rate. It's way down. Look how ridiculously slow this goes and still has a tremendous amount of torque. That is just incredible. Now for the test, let's see how it handles Fallen City. Uh, let's check this guy out. I think he'll have ab oh, nice articulation. Nice. Let's see that. Oh, look at that. That's nice. Probably the best, or at least, yeah, the best, I think. The way it goes over that, oh, nice. No problems, no problem. Even, even here, most of my other ones, they'd be caught up. Most of my other 124s, they'd be caught up if I wasn't on the ridge there. This guy got through it, no problems. Oh, look at that slow crawl. I'm gonna go as slow as I possibly can. Is it a little jumping, maybe that's because I'm turning, yeah. That's just because of the steering. Now we've got the rocker. No, oh, that is excellent. Oh, let's see. Let's let's try the. I know I can get over this slow. I got high centered. Got high centered there. I'm going to switch it into high gear. Let's see how it goes over the... Oh, that's neutral. There's high. Oh, <laughs> it did a little jump. Let's switch it back to... Low gear. Oh, let's try the high gear again. I don't think I got the canopy on too good. Let's get, let's fix that real quick. Okay, canopy back on. I got it in high gear. Let's see if I can just pop over this. Nice, nice. Switch it back into low, neutral, low. Let's see, I'm gonna go slow and slow up this. I wanna see if these tires 
Oh, look, look, look. Come on, come on, come on. The best so far. Better than the SEX24. It went up that hill first try and had one, one tiny, tiny slip that was incredible. Let's do that again. This time we're going to try to turn around Danger Hill. We're going to go up here. Low and slow again. Let's see if we can get up to the top and turn. That's okay, that's okay. I'm gonna try coming up at a different angle. See if we can come up wide. This hill, danger hill here, is the ultimate. Uh, I got the battery lead hanging out there. Oh well, balance lead. This is the ultimate. If the truck can make it up this, Stock. That's awesome. Now look at the side hill. It's a pretty, it's not super side hill, especially not there, but when we get it back over here, it's, the hair's level, so it's, it's almost there. I think this truck can really take a good side hill, but here's the challenge, getting over this hump and this one without flipping over. like that. One more time. here. Right. Now on to Seesaw of Death. Oh, awesome articulation. This has got a pretty wide stance. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to stay on Seesaw. Oh, oh, oh. We're getting some... We're getting... Oh. 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 Wow, it just, it just makes, <laughs> it barely stays on. Seesaw by death. See death by seesaw. Yeah, death yeah, by why seesaw. Why do we keep back messing that up, Dacky? I don't know. Come Show the view from behind how cool it's like right at the edge. Right behind it. You can see this tire's and this tire they're just on it. So let's see if I can make it up here. Keeping my tires on. Wumbo tumble. Rumble tumble? <laughs> Rumble tumble. Let me get it close up of uh, here's the here's the I think the toughest part of the whole course. Which is what, Dax? The beam damage. Beam damage, I think, is the toughest part Never have of this whole course. You have to always remember beam damage. Uh, you always remember beam damage. 
can't take that beam damage, right? Yeah. Because if you don't have damage... Oh, that is good. That is good there. You see the wheels completely off the ground, but it's still, it's not falling. It's not falling like most of the other 124s. Oh, over there. And it fell. And it fell. Not, not survivable. Let's start right here and see if I can do the normal path. I can get all the tires on so wide, I can't get all the tires on. So maybe this guy will fare better with this path. The other side's being damaged. And he died. Beam damage. Died. Beam damage is tough. Yeah. So what 124 do you have? It is. Oh, oh. I, I might do. Oh, I got the front. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Nice. That and for over there, Lava, this bridge is the hardest. Yeah, the end part of the. Of the end part of death. No, death by seesaw. This is Saint Dave's Cross seesaw. Which one is this? This is oh, the Bridge of Doom. Yeah, the Bridge, the of, bridge Doom. of Doom. I'm gonna move my chair so I can catch it. Okay, here we go. Here, right here. I'm gonna move my chair. Here we go. The bridge of Doom. Do to know. I think we should be able to get over here pretty easy with this guy. I'm only nervous about that end over there. Wait, can you move? Dude, I'm trying to sound good. Okay, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Now this is the tough part. Here's the tough part, Dex. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. You have to get your tires just right. Just right. He's doing really good though. This guy's yeah. doing good. Oh, I got a little slippage there. Oh, I punched it over. Nah, he... You almost punched the camera. I almost punched the camera. Punch it. Punch the camera. The camera. Punch the okay. camera. I punched the camera. With your elbow? Mm -hmm. All right. What are we up to, Daki? We're up to uh, the big wheel menace. Stumpy and the big wheel menace. I think this, I this think is this the guy's one I first tried it. it. Yep, first try. I think this guy's going to do it low and slow without a problem. Yeah. Low and slow. Yeah. Were That's the other how ones, we rolled. A lot of the other ones, right? I think, where is it? Right when I get here, I got to like, punch it. Or the back wheels get caught up. But here I'm just going slow. I think it's because the wheels are bigger. Nice. Dad, can I try going over that? Sure. And then just Let me get into my space. Now Dax is going to drive. Now Dax is going to drive. No, this is not the Dax and Come over here, Dax is driving. You do have to use the steering wheel, you know. Dude, use the steering wheel. Easy peasy. Get in your space. Got a good view? Yeah. Okay, the ultimate challenge, the impossible wall. First I'm going to try it low and slow. That's the way we roll. And... Low and slow. And is he gonna make it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he made it! And, and slow victory! Victory! Let's see how he does in high gear. Ready? Listen. He's in high gear. Keep it level right there, bud. 
Let's see high gear. High gear, I think he's going to go over it with absolute ease. Ready? One shot. One shot done. Oh, oh the high gear. Uh okay, so there are always some cons. Always. So, number one con, I think, is this battery mounting system. Uh, the battery kind of goes in here, but then these wires, if you don't place them in the right place, they stop the canopy from going on. So I think the battery is probably my number one gripe. That brings us to the next con I have, which is the canopy is awesome looking, but the way it goes on with those four uh, clips, one, two, three, four, is quite cumbersome. Um, I wish they would have just made a little hinge system right up front here and it just hinged open just like that besides those two things which can be cumbersome and can take some time to get in place to solve this o-ring battery tie down i'm gonna put some duct tape with a bit of plastic in it in the center of the o-ring like that to make it firm and, and something that'll hold down the battery Something like that. So I folded the plastic in the center so that the O-ring could actually slide back and forth. I also added some quick release tabs onto the O-ring. This way comes off quick and goes on quick. So I haven't figured out what this other plug is for that's attached to the lights. This is the one that actually plugs in and turns on the light. If anybody knows what this other connector is for, please leave a comment and let me know. Every time I took the lid off, this other connector would just pop out. So I actually use this other connector that's not being used and I zip tied it to the frame so that every time I move the canopy up and down, that that one doesn't pop out. So now I've got the battery secured with that new system. I got the battery leads out of the way of the canopy from coming down and I've got the lights secured. So hopefully now this lid just pops on without any problems at all. Nice. Everything else is excellent. Check this out. So we've got low gear. We've got high gear and then in the middle we've got neutral which is kind of good say you're trying to mess with something and you got the controller in your hand instead of leaving it in gear and possibly truck moves because you hit this by accident you just flip it in to neutral which is in the center of this third switch here low neutral high gear. For the axles where the tires mount, you can see that they have a little bit of an offset, which makes the stance a bit wider, which is nice, but uh, that means that the wheel does not go over the portal. So you could see on this side how much the portal sticks out from the wheel. Not that big a deal. I mean, you still have the clearance of the portal. Uh, but the portal itself could possibly get hung up if you're close to some pretty neat to gain a little bit of width uh, They gave it a little bit of an offset the windshield wipers do go Back and forth, which is pretty neat, you know pretty realistic from the top. It's got a little breather the lights are kind of like you know that old time yellowish color which is pretty nice it really makes for a nice authentic power wagon old time look out of the box i think this is probably the best 124th crawler now for the articulation test each one of these picasso tiles is about 6.8 millimeters wide first up is the panda 124th with portals 
It has four Picasso tiles, which comes out to 27.2. And this guy, I put a ton of work just to get here. Plus, Panda Hobby sent me new shocks so that it would move. I had to watch my, I'll put my video in a link below. I had to do an incredible amount of work to this truck just to get 27.2 millimeters out of it. Here's the SCX24, and it's got five tiles, and that's 34 millimeters. And that's pretty much, I did some work to this, and I made it uh, ride a little bit higher, but that's pretty much what it got stuck out of the box. So that's pretty true to what you would get if you bought the SCX24. Here is the FMS24, and it has, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles. So that's 47.6 millimeters of articulation, which is awesome, straight out of the box, doing absolutely nothing to it. But I got a real surprising thing. This guy was 150. I think I got some uh, a break on it, some sale on it. So 150. This guy here was 50 bucks from Banggood, mm -hmm. and it drives really good. And it's got the same seven tiles, 47.6 millimeters of articulation out of a $50 truck. This guy was, I think, one of my, I think it was my first crawler, and. I was so impressed with this little thing. It crawls like crazy. It's got great articulation, uphill, side hills. It does a phenomenal job for such a small price. This is the CR24. Uh, if you're interested in just getting into crawling and you know, $150, $140, $150, plus a ton of work, excuse my language, uh, this guy was just, insane amount of work just to get 27.2 articulation out of it in my mind i love the way it looks but not worth it uh if you have the money i would say this guy this guy's good too but i would say this guy uh if you're on a budget and you want to get a car that runs really good i would say the cr24 um but if you got the money get this because this has got the two speed, it's got the looks, it's got the width, it's got the portal axles, uh, it, it's got a whole lot straight out of the box, no upgrading required. Just like this, you're ready to go. What I did have to do with this guy is, I think it was like 30 bucks for a bearing set, so it brings your $50, you know, up to $80. So, you know, this guy's the better deal in the long run. I've got to say, this was the most fun 124th scale crawler I've ever used. With the two-speed transmission, it just adds that next level. And the fact that it runs so good and it's got all those features, this is definitely the best bar none. Do you like this one? Yes. It is just plain awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And ring the bell. Bye. Bye. Subscribe. Ding the bell.